This is Watts's self-portrait, age 17. Uh, in some respects, it's, it's little more than a sketch, but that doesn't matter because you look at the canvas and you can save it immediately. What, to my recollection, it never ever said on one of my school reports, and that is, shows great promise. You can see that he knows, even at 17, exactly what he's doing. The way it's positioned on the canvas, the way the, the, his, his jacket is drawn in, and you can see that he's lost patience with it. I've always had a, a, a little theory that he was whiling away a wet afternoon. He was just footling about, and then he was called away down to tea or to go out and fetch a couple of muffins or something, and he hasn't even bothered to light both eyes, he's scribbled in the corner of it, but he doesn't need to do any more. He's done all that is necessary. You look at that little picture and you see he knows exactly what he's doing. He is a born artist. The 1869 portrait shows him full of gravitas. The, uh, the thinking person's painter, the painter for grown-ups, and it's probably as near in the portraits as to how he looked when he married his second wife. Uh, it, it's a profile. It, it's in reverse to the one that he was invited to contribute to the Uffizi Gallery of Self-Portraits. Now, his final self-portrait, uh, with apologies to Titian, Mary Watts records as perhaps the finest likeness of himself he ever painted. But it, by Watts's standards, it is very unfinished. It is really only the underpainting, which makes it of great interest because you can see exactly how he's modeled his own face. But also the, the overall tone of it is very hot and foxy, and he would have put flesh glazes over it to finish it. But looked at at the right angle, and hopefully in the right light, it somehow does that itself. And I must say, one day I caught a glimpse of it out of the corner of my eye, and it made me jump. I thought the dear old boy himself was actually sitting there, and I understood exactly what Mary Watts meant. And it was painted late in 1903, uh, which is only a few months before he died. A beautiful young girl 23 years old. Who would mind if they could paint a tenth as well as this now? Never mind when they're 87, which was Watts's age when he produced this beautiful picture. It's his adopted daughter Lily, and it was his last Royal Academy picture in 1904. He just lived to see it hung in the Royal Academy. It was completed in the February, hung in the May, and he died on the 1st of July. An interesting uh, angle of it is that the, the roses, the basket of roses, are in fact painted by Mary Watts. She wouldn't have dreamt of interfering in it had it not been, as it were, a family portrait. Watts's idea originally was to paint Lily as a dryad because someone had sent him a laurel wreath for his birthday, a bay laurel wreath, and she, she put it on her head and twirled around the studio and was playing with it, and he painted her holding it. And Mary suddenly decided that that was too funereal and said, here, give me the brush, painted it out, substituted this basket of roses, pastiched her husband's style so well that nobody would ever have known had not the lady herself, the sitter, told us of it. 
In fact, there are faint traces of the laurel wreath here and there. Whether they'll come back as the mouse did in, in or as the mouse is doing in, in the Song of the Shirt, I don't know. But the ring, thing that really charms me about this portrait is that I had the great good fortune and privilege to know for many years the lady concerned. She wasn't a beautiful young girl, she was a beautiful old lady. And in her last years, she visited the gallery quite often. And it was as though she'd come from another planet, which indeed she had, in a manner of speaking. And it was a rather curious sensation when men were flying to the moon and back to be talking to someone who would say, oh, my dear, I've never understood why people were terrified of Gladstone. He was a perfect sweetie. When we went to tea with him, we used to play Ring of Roses in the garden afterwards. Well, I mean, it literally stops you in your tracks, the thought of Gladstone playing Ring of Roses. But she was there. She saw it. He, Gladstone played Ring of Roses with her and Watts in the garden of 10 Downing Street. Sadly, she died in 1972. Not unexpectedly, she was in her 93rd year, and that was old for 30 years ago. And the greatest sadness, I suppose in a way, apart from losing an utterly charming lady, was that the last link with Watts broke. She was the last person living who had known him well. And almost overnight, we seemed to become an anachronism.